If you could be any animal, what would you be? I'm thinking shark because you get a whole week of uh, <laughs> <laughs> of publicity, and um, you know you're, you're sort of the king of the ocean, except for the orca. Orca will kill you. That's true, but I, you know, listen, we'll come to a sort of mutual understanding. You know what I mean? <laughs> you do your thing, I'll do my thing over here. We'll call. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking shark or something in a circus would be great too. A circus. Yeah, something circus. I've no, heard you bad things. You don't want to be in a circus, dude. No. That's like the worst place. No, ben. but like uh, there are probably new circuses now that are more so animal they friendly. Don't, they, do, they don't do animals, basically. Yeah, so you just wouldn't be there. Yeah. But you could be someone's emotional support dog at the circus. There you go. You wouldn't be in the mm. show, but you'd be backstage with a nice lady, probably. Ben, what animal would you be? I'm glad I'm talking already. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, I've been preparing an answer. I didn't know. I was, I, was, I was just fixated on the debris on the back of your hoodie. You got a lot of debris on oh. your hoodie. Oh, large yeah, did, amounts of yeah. debris. Oh, I was cleaning up back there. Oh, fair enough. Sorry. No, no worries. I just want, I was I was debris focused. I love debris. I would Great be a, I would be an animal that that maybe like creates debris like a woodpecker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would just slowly pick at wood on top of Koji's head. Oh, nice. That's that so, on the head too. No, but I couldn't. You know, I, 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 I couldn't be that specific as to my location. I'm just hoping something hit your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> or or a circus animal probably. Circus animal. Yeah. Something, I guess because yeah. we're, we're showmen at the end of the day. I don't think they're fucking with the with the elephants too, because we're showmen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to put on a show. I don't think they don't mess with the elephants too much. They, they're very large animals. No, but they they do abuse them. They do. They, yeah. That's why elephants aren't allowed in. You don't want to be a circus, circus animal. I don't. Full yeah. stop. No. All right, but like, what if? I was into it. <laughs> okay, so, okay, a kinky elephant. Got it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. more, maybe more yeah. like a safari kind of animal. You know, like it's yeah, kind like of wilderness, free one. but well, that's better. Exactly. You know, what or I mean? San Diego Wildlife Park. Something like Wild that. No, they yeah. drug those guys up big time. I went as a kid with my parents. There's like lions. And they let you like roll your window down. They're not afraid that you're going to be murdered by a lion because wow. they are like heavily sedated. Well, that's is that a problem? I mean, if strong point. You get to, <laughs> get to do drugs and be a lion. Strong point. You get to do drugs and be a lion. I mean, those were the laziest lions. Like they were not intimidating. I would have probably like gone and poked one in the eye. Well, that actually explains a lot. I always wondered why they're always just laying around and they're on heroin. Oh, yeah, that's they're, why they're they never do up. anything. To lions, pretty good. Yeah, lions. Lions. That might be a lion, just yeah, in general, and even like a non-drugged up one. Yeah. <laughs> you would occasionally you still get to do a musical, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. Probably. <laughs> Hang out with some fun gay guys in sparkly sweaters, you know, like the ones that, from Vegas, those guys, you know them. Okay. The ones that they attacked. Yeah, I forget their name. Yeah, oh, Leroy. Leroy, Leroy and Phil. Yeah. What? No. Leroy and Phil? Leroy and Siegfried and Roy. The very low budget version of Siegfried and Roy. That's hilarious. Leroy and Phil. Right, just big like actual house cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just fat house cats. They're they're definitely eating Phil, by the way, like on the weekly. Yeah. My my brother, um his son, he has a like a golden dog. I don't know what kind of dog, but it's like and then for one Halloween he he put like a lion's mane around the neck. Oh, it's a great costume. And looked great. And, and his son, my nephew, kind of playing with it. And it was really cool. I probably have the picture somewhere. But it, just the other side of me was like, that's a great thing. But also tell him that, you know, lions are not safe. Because <laughs> I don't want him to think that he can. I mean, if this, how stupid is this kid? <laughs> well, he was like confusing a, a cat. Yeah, well, he's not yeah. even going to remember well, that. This is, right, so right, this right. is funny. On, in terms of animal safety, something that I tell all my students in my writing classes is yes. this. Black fight back, brown lay down, white say goodnight. And it's in response to bears. bears. Yeah, bears. I don't even know what that means. White say goodnight because it's a polar bear. It's gonna kill you. So polar bears are the most aggressive bears. Oh, polar wow. bears are the most dangerous animals. Right, because the, they're the hungriest. It's, no, it's the uh, apex predator. It kill it, like kills humans. Really? Yeah, it, <gasps> it actually hunts humans. But um, one time I was in class. And one of the students walked away and came back and thought I was talking about people. <laughs> and he was like getting offended because he was like he was like a Caucasian guy. He was getting offended. I was like, no, no, no it's bears, not humans. Because <laughs> it's, it's it's brown. Lay down. Lay down. The whites black, are the white apex. Black, remember, black, white, black. Oh, white. Say good night to the whites. They're the only ones you have to speak to. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that that kind of could work for people. You know what I mean? Oh, no. oh, gosh. This whole I had an encounter with a bear once, by the way. Oh yeah, where? Whoa. An encounter with a wild bear. I was in Sequoia. I was like nine or ten years old. I was camping my family. We're not big campers, and. I've always been a night owl, and so my whole family goes to bed, and I'm up last by myself by the campfire. Wow. And our tent is like 10, 12 feet behind me, zipped up, my family's sleeping, and I'm at the fire, there's like three feet in front of me, and then 10 feet behind that is our food locker thing that's locked up, and I hear this rustling, and right behind the food locker, a head pops out, and it's a bear, 
and it starts coming all the way out, and it's like a nine foot black bear. Wow. And it looks at me, and I'm like, please keep moving, and it does not. It starts to walk immediately towards me. And it, so it's like very quickly, like 10 feet, 8 feet, 6 feet. I'm like, oh shit. And they tell you to like stand up and make noise and like try to scare it. Mm-hmm. But um, there's no way I'm trying to scare yeah, black a Black fight back. Yeah. So right. that means but, make yourself big, right? Well, yeah, yeah, you no, literally no fight. Way no, you literally doing, fight. Okay. You punch no it? I'm antagonizing yeah. this bear. Maybe he's mm-hmm. chill and all of a sudden I yell at him. No, because it seem right. The, re- the reason that they don't want you to lay down with a black bear is that they think you're prey. I wasn't gonna lay yeah. down either. No, no, but that, that, but, but, but the also, brown bear they'll leave you alone. It's at like, night. You you the, can't tell if it's black or brown. I, I imagine. No, they're they're very different. I've heard colors. black bears are smaller, so that size yeah. sounds like a brown bear. Or maybe it was brown, but mm-hmm. it starts coming towards me, and I just get up and I bolt for the tent behind me. Mm-hmm. I figure a thin piece of plastic will keep me safe. Right. And I un- start unzipping the thing, and I'm shouting, "Bear, bear, my brother!" To per- save his own life, zips it back close. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Oh, I'm like, are you kidding me? I just like ripped it open, dove in, zipped it back, and literally 10 seconds, five seconds after I dive in, the whole side of the tent just knocks. Like the bear straight up came at me, bumped the whole side of the tent, continued on, and then all the other campgrounds start screaming like moments later. It was wild. I got, and I you close. were the only survivor. <laughs> the only survivor. Everybody was killed that night. <laughs> <laughs> That's the unofficial official story. That's the unofficial right, official story. Right. Uh, I think it'd be a bear, you guys. Polar bear. Uh, the white one. And that's my answer. At the end. Uh, you want to eat everybody? <laughs> I will eat everybody. Okay. And I want to be a dog. And a that's a good care, one. With a well-taken care family, though. That's like, family takes care of me. Actually, whip it. I would want to be a whip it. Because I've been a runner for a long time, and I'd like to know what it's like to be fast. <laughs> What's a whip it? Uh, a dog. What type of dog. Oh, I thought, I thought it was something you kind of... it was when kinda... you take an aerosol and you get also high. Also that. Yeah, that's what I thought it was as well. <laughs> Probably they're named after the dogs, because they're hyper as shit, so they yeah. always seem high. That's a tough dog to be, though. Because yeah. you need a lot of exercise, and you need to find the right family that would be willing to take you out. My stuff. family would be Olympians. <laughs> be the, a, a whippet dog for Olympians. Now I'm hearing his animal names as Olympian. I'm like, what kind of animal is that? <laughs> An Olympian. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is season four, episode four of the award-winning unofficial official story. So glad we uh, created that award and gave it to ourselves. No, uh, <laughs> that's a real word. I know, I'm just word. teasing, okay. I'm teasing. I'm Dwayne. I'm Kat. And I am Koji. This is where we tell you the official story. We look at the paranormal, uh, conspiracies, unexplained phenomena, cryptids, and true crime. And by the end, we'll tell you what really maybe happened. If you like the podcast, please share it with your friends, family, and even your enemies. You'll be doing a lot to help keep us bring the exciting and fun content every month. In the last episode, we said that we'll be celebrating the anniversary of Roswell. That was incorrect. This month, we're celebrating a much more important holiday, Marine Day, by asking the important question, are octopuses aliens? But first, let's introduce our guest, comedian and actor, Ben Glebe. Ben, I've known for a long time since he's... I think since he started, and he's really made a way in this world. He's one of the lead anchors on The Young Turks. You may have seen his acclaimed stand-up specials, The Mad King and Neurotic Gangster. He's host of the Emmy-nominated brain teaser game show, Idiot Test, that you might have seen on Netflix or currently on Game Show Central. And for seven years, he was one of the stars of Chelsea Lately with Chelsea Handler. He's done over 400 episodes of TV, and his online views are now over half a billion Please welcome my man, 40 grand, Ben Glebe. Thanks, man. What's up, everybody? Are you running for president again? No. No. Okay. I asked the same thing. It's <laughs> so cool to be able to ask someone that question. I wasn't sure if I was going to still be invited once I said no to that. I thought that was like contingent on the booking. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, definitely not running again. And uh, I'm just, you know, there's certain things I do twice, certain things I don't. Running, no. This podcast, yes. Oh, nice. happy to be back. Do you remember which episode you were on? Yeah, it was one of the earlier ones. It was with uh, about Elon Musk, whether he was an alien. Yes, or... right. <gasps> Interesting. Right. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. That's one of he actually our popular is, right? ones. Yes, you always do whether something is an alien. Is that always the topic? No, no, no. <laughs> it just happened that you came That's twice. So funny. <laughs> okay. It's because we think you're an alien. That's why we're like Ben would know. He would know Let's for debate sure. That because I'm not certain myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our last episode was about Bruce Lee, whether he was uh, killed. Uh, with a death touch. It, it was, was keto. It was he didn't do much. No, keto. no, he was Asian. Remember? Or no, he was African American. That was the answer to that okay. one. What? So <laughs> basically, official, official. Yeah, yeah, you he, had to be there. He was a. He's really a black man, <laughs> and it was going to come out that he's not Asian but black. 
And so he had to fake his death and move to South LA. Have people ever seen him? Because he's a movie star. And <laughs> well, he had, he, he had not black. He had yellow face on. Oh, that explains. Yeah. It does explain it. Yeah, and they did the eye thing, you know. Oh, really? They had used, used like <laughs> clips. Of, I don't know what the move was. I don't know how, that he's, how that's even done. He kind yeah. of facelift. Well, yeah. and also to be kind fair, I mean, we, we've also realized that Tupac was actually Japanese. That's right. Did, so, is that what we voted on? That yeah, one? that was. The I, we voted on. I, I actually don't think Japanese. that's what we voted on. But no, right, you weren't I'll there. You weren't there. I really that was before it. your time. Okay. <laughs> so Tupac is Japanese. Bruce Lee is black. It all makes sense. I mean, if you just think about it, it just makes sense. Sure. No, it, I love. That. I think it makes sense if you don't think about it. Actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think less, you guys. <laughs> you know, I watch all your stuff on the Young Turks. Thanks. How is it being on the show? I mean. I'm sure you get a lot of hate mail, though, right? I do. It's, it's, this has been the most hate hate mail filled and hate DM filled time of my life. It's been very intense, wow. but uh, you know, it makes you stronger. How do you deal with it? Like, if I get one bad comment, I'm like ruined for oh, three really? hours. I'm no, just I like, just, ugh. I, I don't. You just can't let it affect you at the volume I'm getting. It. You just yeah. can't let it affect you. So I just. I engage with these people far too much and I try to like debate them far too much. I should ignore it probably. For the first time, I'm actually blocking people. I never blocked people. Right, but if someone right. like really is just like straight up being mean and intentionally hurtful without making any sort of good point. If they're mean and hurtful with a good point, I'm open. Right. I'm open. <laughs> <laughs> they're tearing my existence to pieces with horrible accusations and insults and they got nothing intelligent around it i'm i'm, I'm blocking or but i just i, I just kind of laugh it off you know i just realize these people don't get it they obviously don't understand the truth like i do <laughs> and you move on you know people try and get you fired is a little bit more annoying but it's, you, you weather that storm too can you tell us about some uh, time you've converted someone or at least converted them around uh, an issue and What's that worth? Like, is converting one person or making one person slightly see something your way, is that worth 10 angry DMs? Have you ever thought of done that kind of? I don't know. It's a good question. You know, I probably should remember the conversions more strongly to keep me going. I know it's happened a, a bunch of times, mm-hmm. but I don't, it's not like a eureka moment where I'm, I'm like, or I can remember somebody saying, I am completely flipped on this issue, but all the time people say, like, you opened my eyes to it, I didn't see it that way. Right, I right. now understand where you're coming from more. And so I think that's worth its weight in gold just because, I don't know, just because it it just helps mitigate vitriol and anger right. and disinformation. And I think that's as, as powerful as a complete flip. It's just getting people to, like, take off the gas a little bit and hit the brake on their anger, I think, or their, or like I said, on on their disinformation or misinformation, I think is worth it. Is it worth all the hate? Yeah, I mean, I really take a lot of solace from what they say that if you're not getting any hate, you're not doing anything worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Like if you're just really so pleasing everybody, you're maybe just doing boring things. And so, I try to take take solace from that because if not, I would probably be more upset. So I think <laughs> it makes me feel better about it. But, uh, you know, I would probably rather live in a world where I didn't have people coming at me a million miles a minute. But, you know, you don't get to control the world. Does that ever happen in real life? I mean, do people confront you in real life or is it all mostly online? Never. Not never. I did enough. get spit on once at a live show. But other than that, it doesn't happen. But I didn't see who did it. Was, so. it, was it based on your act or based on something you had done on, online I, on TV? Or? I was on stage and then... All of a sudden, like 10 minutes later after my set, I saw spit on my jacket. So oh, I didn't even see the person do it, unfortunately, because unfortunately, but fortunately for them. Right, right. But right, um, right. other than that, no, generally people are a lot more, I don't even want to say cowardly, they're just a lot more timid in person. And if you didn't see them, strong. you don't know. If it was pretty right. clear. It was like oh, a right. full on situation, right? Right there on the shoulder. Like, but, okay. but about that, that is a flex that you didn't even notice. Like this person's bat on you True and you that. were just so not, in your own zone that you're like by, what right, good point right. I like that. that guy's probably like that guy's impenetrable <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to rattle him and I couldn't I would just gonna start crying <laughs> yeah some, sometimes some people have slided me and I didn't get what they were saying until later yeah, yeah. I could so, see you not getting that yeah <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and I would just be like like literally sit at home I think that guy was trying to Oh, the moment's passed. You know yeah. what I mean? One of the really interesting things uh, about the United States and, and kind of our society is that people tend to hate people that they don't know or like in theory. So like, for example, they'll be like, you know, my neighbor is black. I like them. They're nice people. But I don't like black people in general, you know, or I don't I like my Mexican neighbor or whatever or my Mexican friend. But I don't want them to like invading our country or something. You know, it's like so it's really weird. I mean, during even during the last election, 
like I like my Muslim friend, but you know, Muslims can't come in here. They're all terrorists. And you're like, what? Like, you know, like even places that aren't even affected by, you know, that kind of immigration are anti Muslim, anti whatever. Right. And so it's just really interesting in, in America. That's why when I watch shows like What Would You Do, they usually come to the rescue of whatever is happening in front of them. You know, like they always help the person. But then you then you like if you really quiz them like you do when you quit, like when they quiz um, MAGA people and then they like say the weirdest shit out of their mouth. And you're like, yeah, you? there's a huge disconnect. Yeah, there's a disconnect because like they, they like like, for example, they like the gay person in their family. Mm-hmm. But they don't want the gay people to get married. I've had that with, with <laughs> you know? um, like, if I'm dating someone, their mother, if the mother is kind of racist, they'll say racist things about Latinos, but then they'll be like, but you're okay. You're different. <laughs> you're different. And I'll yeah. be like, yeah, I'm not that different. Yeah, yeah, I always thought that when you know somebody, you stop hating the group. This is sad to hear that even if you know somebody in the group, you just consider them the exception and you still hate the group. Yeah. And, and people really want to hate. And then, <laughs> and then they'll have no recognition that talking about the hate of the group is going to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, still That's go for it. Right. Also yeah. that. <laughs> Wild. That I was mean, a tangent. Yeah, that was, sorry, that was a small yeah, tangent. No, it was a bit of a tangent, but, you know, at least all four of us are white, and that's the best part of it. <laughs> 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 right, right. And also, none of us are white, by yeah, the way. Right. For yeah. the <laughs> by the way, you're only presuming that I'm not white. Right, so right. Just, I don't identify, to I identify as a white man. <laughs> Great. I'm happy for you, and I support you. Actually, all I ever wanted to be was a beautiful white girl. Mm. Like that's all I ever want. Like a really oh, hot one. I can talk about tangent. That is a share. <laughs> that is a share. I mean, I think you can. No, no, but I wanted I mean, to be a really man. hot one that could get married and have a baby. Mm, well, I don't know. If yeah, you could I couldn't do all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You so. could uh, you could get married and adopt a baby. You could definitely be a white girl, get married and adopt a baby. You go Michael Jackson style. <laughs> on, on your outward appearance, you, mm-hmm. yeah, but I'm not gonna you, like as hot as if I was just a straight, like a real. Like, I mean, I I believe in you more than you I've, do. I've, <laughs> seen, I've seen some great work done. There's some great work. There's some out great there. work. Yeah, I think my time is passed on this okay, one. Okay, well, I guess I'm sorry to hear you give up on the dream. Yeah. Look, in the name of Pride Month, I have to be supportive of this. So. <laughs> That's right. And with that, you guys, uh, let's get the story straight once and for all. Let's do it. <laughs> we are talking about octopuses. Is it octopuses or octopi? Oh, I think it's octopuses. I think I'm that's what they. Sure. Yeah, I heard an NPR story. They kept saying octopuses. They don't get stuff wrong, but I always thought it was octopi. Yeah, I feel like if you say octopi, no one's going to check you because it sounds right. It and, up and octopuses <laughs> sound a little bit sketchy. Yeah, like, yeah. it sounds a little dirty. Like it sounds, a little it dirty. sounds like. Hey, I like to, your. I yeah, like yeah. your octopus. Octopi <laughs> is, is if you, <laughs> if you ever capture and kill and then. Bake an octopus. That's when it's octopi. Oh, oh <laughs> very nice. I thought you were going to say if you go to Marie Callender's and you get a octopi, but each slice is a different flavor, <laughs> and there are eight slices, that's an octopi. <laughs> that actually wow. sounds amazing. It like sounds one. amazing. Like, a lot of work <laughs> for the chef. Lime, Why do they have to be eight different flavors? Cherry. Just eight slices alone should make it an octopi. I know, I know. I, no, wait, so you're saying like, yeah, that's yeah. like how you market it. This yeah, is yeah. the eight-flavor pie. Octopi. I so like you, that a lot. You just built, you make eight pies, and then you... No, I understand how to make it. Each one yeah. have to, you take a slice. Oh, no, that's they, a good, I didn't yeah. actually figure out how to make it until you figured it out. That's, <laughs> you have to eight. Yeah. that's a lot more plausible. Now it's just a, now it's just a post-baking distribution. Right? Yeah, you can't cook all eight and set it together. Oh, man, I thought you were doing some kind of wild... They do that with, with, there's cakes. They have cakes, but they do it with the layers. So horizontally, you can have like six different flavors in a oh, cake. Oh, right. But I don't think horizontally is at all as good. Yeah. Because then yeah. each bite has to have all of it. I like your idea. You get to sample like full-on different situations. Yeah. Who wants a mishmash of a bunch of different from flavors that don't go together. Yeah. Well, you pick ones that do. There okay, you go. if okay. you're going to keep making good points, <laughs> right, I will right. keep listening and acknowledging them and respecting you for it. So, uh, what are some of the reasons people think octopuses are, yeah, it does sound... I, I like Stop octopi, emphasizing actually. it. It's a yeah. little weird. Yeah, I like <laughs> Just say I like your octopus. Octopus is my favorite, my favorite James Bond movie. That was a James Bond movie, Octopussy. Mm-hmm. What are some of the reasons people think the octopus is an alien? How about that? Uh, first, their complex nervous system, octopi, have a highly developed nervous system and a large brain relative to the size of their body. They possess about 500 million neurons, uh, a number comparable to dogs, which gives them advanced problem solving and learning abilities, uh, camouflage abilities, thanks to specialized cells called uh, chromatophores. Uh, uh, Pro- chromatophores. I wrote all this down so I could have it. Anyway, chromatophores. Luca for like you put on your notebook and then just put it away. Because you wrote all this I'm, down so I could have it. You pulled the notebook out well, I'm at the words and then now, just so. left it on the table closed. <laughs> I'm at the words now, so it doesn't, you know what I mean? Anyway, all those things. 
Uh, they can change the color of their texture of their skin to blend in to their surroundings like almost Michael Jackson. instantly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was listening to that. So they have like like these cells with like pigments, and then the neuron tells it like which pigment to expand based off what's around it. It's crazy. Wild. It's like the original wow. ink blot feature on Instagram stories. Uh huh. <laughs> Where you can match whatever color is going on, which also blows my mind. Oh yeah, definitely. Also, I believe octopus brains are donut shaped. I saw that on YouTube. Anyways, there's a hole in the middle. Um, I don't know. It, well, it's well, just don't. It's donut shape. That I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, regular donuts. Are we talking crawlers or you know what I mean? <laughs> crawlers would be appropriate. Yeah, regular yeah. donuts. See <laughs> regular donuts. Uh, they also have a flexible body structure. Unlike many animals, octopuses have no rigid skeleton, allowing them to squeeze through incredibly tight spaces. Also, regeneration. They can regenerate lost limbs, a trait shared with only a few other animal species, like lizards. They Wild. have three hearts and blue blood pusses have three hearts two pump to the gills and one pumps to the rest of the body and their blood is blue due to a copper based molecule called hemocyanin just the word cyan mean blue uh, which is more efficient than hemoglobin in cold and low oxygen environments and finally they have unique locomotion they move by jet propulsion expelling water through a siphon and can also crawl using their arms. In 2018, a group of scientists published a paper that argued that octopuses didn't come out of a primordial soup, but actually from outer space. We'll put a link in our show notes. The most compelling evidence of this is how advanced octopuses are. Octopuses have 33,000 genes, about 10,000 more than humans. Hmm. Some other evidence that octopuses and might 5, have... And 5,000 less than Jay Leno. <laughs> 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 like, okay. We're gonna get Jay Leno. Oh, okay, okay. We're, no. we're gonna get Jay Leno. Hey man, no. <laughs> I don't no. know why you had to throw my me under the bus. I'm cool with Jay. That's my guy. Jay, yeah, Jay's the best, yeah, yeah. nicest guy in the world. Just wears a lot of jeans. I don't think he would deny it. <laughs> I like him like wearing a Canadian yeah, tuxedo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you had to explain that joke to me. I guess I'm too young for it. Some other evidence that octopuses might have come from another planet. What a great are... way to spin not getting a joke. <laughs> what a great way to pass them aggressively. <laughs> not you're, getting... yeah. you're old. I guess I'm just too hot and young to understand that joke. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm going to use that from now on. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, I think it works a little better on Cap, but you do you, Cody. No, well, I'm going to use it on stage if a joke doesn't work. You know what? Great. You guys are too hot and young. I should have known better. <laughs> no, that's the kids' ass way to do it. The other right. way, it's better to go, I guess I'm too hot and young for you guys to get that joke. But I'd rather, I'd rather, rather the crowd be on your side, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> this explains a lot about my career. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, some other evidence that octopuses might have come from another planet are their accelerated evolution. They're the smartest of the invertebrates. They have a centralized brain and brains in their arms. They're full of personality. I'd like to learn more about that. And they have a very complicated biology. Remember the 33,000 genes and cosmic powers. Uh, apparently, they've been able to pick the winner of the FIFA games with 85.7% accuracy. For the, for the personality one. Um, but apparently, like the, the keepers of the octopuses at different places, they actually like they have personalities that they actually like react to things and they like do certain things. And so like some are more outgoing. Like and- a dog. It's like a dog, they said, basically. Like they, they all like, you know, a dog has a personality. Mm-hmm. Like octopuses have a similar kind of personality. That's what they said. Hmm. Like you could tell, like this is like this is Jack versus another one. Are they like playing? Like one of them like plays a lot of pranks, and the other one's a good listener. <laughs> 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 one of the things on that NPR uh, thing that we were listening to would be that uh, they were saying that like they felt like when they were watching them, they were watch- being watched back. Like they were looking at them, studying them too. So it wasn't like a one way study. Huh. Apparently, allegedly. And they're a great escape artist. Did you mention? Yeah. That? Yes. Because I heard about they that. They escape on everything. Mm-hmm. They also listen better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Even if octopuses aren't aliens, Donovic Sivatilli? Sivatilli. Okay, like how you said it. Um, I just learned American recently. <laughs> A PhD candidate in astrobiology and psychology at the University of Washington said the octopus's long separate evolution toward cognitive complexity makes them a very appropriate model for what intelligence might look like if it evolves on a completely different planet. He also said, in my studying the octopuses, I've really learned to appreciate that there are many varieties of intelligence out in the world and possibly the universe. The human mind is just one of many different varieties. It's not about how intelligent they are. It's how they are intelligent. I feel like there's a 
octopus standing right behind him with a gun. Right. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, oh, he's an octopus. Oh, you know, there you yeah, go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just want to step back for a second about the them picking the FIFA games. Like, do they tell them, like, is someone reading to them the stats so that they're <laughs> intelligent, like, being like, okay, this is the one that's Don't get hung the up winner? The or are they just like... Right. Are they watching the games from the year before? Checking big chance? You know what I mean? Is it <laughs> How do they know? Yeah, that one makes no sense. Yeah. It's probably just random. Are we just assuming they're psychic? Like, they, they're, they, they're just Maybe like they're tapped aliens. into something? How are they expressing their, their vote? With their hand. Right. Raise an arm. But they have so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, we'll have to uh, YouTube that one or something and yeah. see yeah. how that pick is done. According to a Reddit thread, we found some of the brain waves resemble the size and shape of mammalian, ma- like mammal like brain activity, but other pulses from the nervous neurons of octopuses were completely bizarre. These were long lasting, slow oscillations with large amplitudes, which indicates uh, relatively strong mm. electrical activity. These have not been reported before. Are you guys thinking the same thing I am? Maybe we should stop eating them. I wasn't thinking that, actually. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Leading up to this podcast, I actually had, yeah, I've eaten tiny octopus before. And then last week, I had like one arm. It was pretty good. But worth it? No, it tastes just like any other seafood. So why would I want to eat an octopus? You've just eaten a little bit of octopus, but you're considering dabbling more. I no, get you. opposite. I'm pulling back. I'm saying I don't want to continue dabbling. I mean, so you're into it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I like to eat octopusy, you know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Talking about a nine some. Yeah. Here's, here's what I don't get about it. So prior to me, it really wants to watch that My Octopus Friend documentary. Mm-hmm. But everybody says after you watch it, you can't eat octopus anymore. And I've already pulled back also on eating octopus just because of how intelligent they are. But I feel like that's always the big reason people like to give for not eating certain animals. They say, oh, they're smart. That seems so classist. Like, why why would we only not eat an animal because it's smart? It's fine to eat dumb things. Like, do we eat dumb people? Or we're not going to eat a smart person, but if they're dumb, we could throw them in a cage or eat them. So I guess we have to eat MAGA people? Is that what I'm... (laughs) Yeah, why is the the intelligence level what's deciding? Right, right. Like, yeah, like if a plane crashes... In the Alps or something like that, or right. I would and, never kill him. He's smart. <laughs> right. We have to take a test and see who we're going to eat first. Right. You know what I mean? But, but well, the thing is, it's like it, this is based off of biology. It's biologically smart, like a five-year-old, right? It's yeah. it's not based off of a classist system, right? That's what's but different. Why does like, intelligence you matter if it's a living being, it's a living aware being? Why does it matter if it's smart or if it's dumb? Because it might be like more aware than the other ones. Like then it's you, able to put together a coherent narrative right. about like but this with, is my family. With that logic, you shouldn't eat anything that can feel pain. No, she makes a good point. Kat makes a good point that maybe it's beyond just its own awareness of its own self. Once it has, like, family connections, once it can miss things, then it's just extra sad because you're, like, also leaving sad family members behind that aren't eaten. Mm -hmm. Well, then you should just eat all of them. Now, that's (laughs) another way to look at it. (laughs) Because all of a sudden, I'm picturing every octopus now that's being eaten. Right. Like... Bruce Willis at the end of Armageddon going right, down that right, tube right. being like, I'll see you, son, or I won't see you. And the other thing is maybe because they know getting eaten is on a table, maybe that's forced, that's caused them to love one, each other stronger and oh, be more okay, appreciative. So like they get eaten is really good for their family relationships. Because they don't they don't take any moments for granted. Yeah. All right. I'll just, I'll just say this. Armageddon, <laughs> some octopus on the way home tonight and eating <laughs> the shit out of it. <laughs> Yeah, you can't appreciate life unless you, there's death. So you're saying we're doing them a favor. Maybe not a favor, really nice but, but they've been together in a sense. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I think it's good that we eat them so that they don't take over. I think that's the only thing that's keeping them from taking over the world. The fact that we're slow, slowly culling the herd over there. And, the, mm-hmm. and they can't survive. Can they survive uh, out of water? Yeah. Oh, my God. I just got freaked. <laughs> the fuck out. We're talking about eating animals. And an animal just very quickly, a large animal started coming at me. That was not in this room before, and it's, I thought it was going to be octopus. Literally, for a second, I had a mini heart attack. It was your dog, <laughs> but I didn't know you had a doggy door there. I didn't know this was possible. I just all of a sudden saw an entity in my peripheral vision come at me with half the legs of an octopus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the timing was pretty, Ooh, yeah. I mean, that was so, wild. It was like, don't be eating any of us. <laughs> Fuzz. That was intense, dude. Literally, I might go vegan after that moment. That was wild. Could've, yeah. I saw the sign. And it opened up my eyes. We all listened to an NPR article about what an octopus's mind tells us about aliens. And we'll put a link in our show notes. What did you guys think? The thing that was most fascinating in the article to me was that 
you mentioned it briefly, but they have like hundreds of brains. Like mm-hmm. every one of their yeah. suckers has its own individual yeah. brain. Right, right. And they only send messages to the main central brain when necessary. So they analogized it to like a computer processor that processes all the information. Then the central brain only gets the search results. It's kind of like that. That's and wild. Also kind of like Reddit upvoting. They said like it only upvotes the things that are important. So when it find when one of the brains, one of the suckers finds something of interest, it then tells the nearby suckers, and then it upvotes it and it kind of creates an alert to all the other brains to start coming this way. And then it eventually deems it worthy to go to the main brain. That is very different than human development in a yeah. creepy way. Impressive. I thought that's how men's wieners work. Is that not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a strong fact. I don't know that the word wiener is the one to choose, but there's no, there's no less attractive word yeah. for, for what we got going on down there. I just felt wieners. like no, there pe- might be kids pee-pee. listening, so pee-pee's, I pee-pee's decided worse. to go with Shlong. the kid version. Kids listening? Shlong. No, there's no pee pee. Maybe is worse. They're both not great. All three of those are not good. Yeah, yeah. No, but don't human men have? We already talked about have... pussy about 17 times, so if kids are listening, I don't think this is the time to draw the line. <laughs> okay. Well, I heard no. male genitalia are controlled by some like other nerves that are below, like. In well, the I mean, we definitely can't spine. always control what what's I mean, happening it, down there. You got there. the gut, and it's not. It's not as smart as an octopus arm, clearly. No, no mine is. No, because <laughs> well, you're Asian. <laughs> Oh, there you go. And it can't, it's not as smart, but it can squeeze into all kinds of holes. I'll tell you that. It can squeeze anywhere. It can fit in. But yeah, I mean, multiple brains is wild. If it was just bigger, it would take over the world. Well, I mean, the ones in the Pacific Northwest are pretty huge. Um, How big were they? Giant, they're like, they can be up to 600 pounds. Oh. Yeah, they look like, and I was looking at some National Geographic footage of them. They look some like goodies. giant rocks. Like Ooh. if they just stay put, because they have all these like ridges and shit on them, and they just look like rocks. And then all of a sudden, it, it like starts moving, and you see its Oof. arms flailing. Great it's impression really you did with your Thank arms. Thank you. There. I know. I wish we had video, but I'm like <laughs> flailing You're my really arms. Really doing well. quite I had to a double take. I, I had like two arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I talk with my hands. Um, yeah, that was impressive. It's cultural. It's probably because you're white. <laughs> no. we could both be white women okay yeah okay no but it's crazy and then there's videos of the octopuses actually wrestling sharks so they'll get Whoa. like smaller sharks i want to see that and they just grab them and so you know how sharks have to keep moving in order to uh, breathe if they stop swimming they can't breathe and they suffocate well to kill a shark all they have to do is make it stop moving and then it dies and then they eat it with their beak sharks have been getting killed a lot i mean a lot of orcas have been killing sharks, mm. like great well, Orcas have been killing boats, too, attacking boats. Oh, actually, they, they just came out with the why. Did you hear why? No, they just came out with the why? Um, they said that they're bored. They're bored? Uh, orcas are highly intelligent. That's why we don't eat them. But yeah, they, they're they basically, they're just saying they're bored, and they just want to start messing with boats. We just got to drop some waterproof tablets in the ocean. <laughs> waterproof tablets? Oh, well, like an uh, iPad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, thinking like toilet bowl. <laughs> <bill. laughs> <laughs> no, like, uh, yeah, electronic You just don't want to use tablets. a brand name there. Right, right. Yeah, right, until right, they right. pay us. You gotta right, pay. fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Hot man, I completely missed that. I just said it. I was just like, yeah, I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time to put on our thinking caps. Are octopuses actually aliens? When we return, we'll settle this once and for all and figure out what really maybe happened. Now that we've reviewed the evidence, let's give our theories. All right, who wants to go first? I don't want to step on anyone's toes. And, and my theory isn't like somewhat far-fetched, but here's what I think. Because some some of the theories are like they were a, a meteorite hit and it had like you know some mic some um, octopus matter and then they just sort of evolved from there. I think that they are aliens, but they were sent here. And you know how like in regular jobs, you know how people don't do a great job. Sometimes people just don't do their jobs well. So whoever was at the home planet, they were scoping out some places to you know maybe live, maybe take over. And uh, he came across Earth, and he's like, oh, yeah, this works. And he was like, who's the, you know, what's going to be the dominant thing? What's going to be, the, you know? And he saw that it was covered mainly with water. So he was like, yes, yes. He didn't, like, do all his homework. So when they came, they could survive. They live in the water, but um, they lost contact to the home planet, right? So now they're just kind of waiting around. But they're biding their time. And if their home planet ever comes back, then, and that point, they, they can take over. And anyone who's ever eaten calamari, you have a little bit of octopus sort of DNA inside you, in your microbiome, like in, in microbiome in your um, gut. So at that point, if you have ever eating, eaten any octopus, not calamari, but any kind of octopus, when they come back, they'll take over your body. 
you may not become a, uh, an octopus, but you will be able to become invisible because oh. of the, some of the traits they have. I wish I had chromatophores. Yeah. So, well, if you've ever, you, you, ha- you do because you ate some octopus in your life. That's true. So, yeah, that's my theory is that they are aliens. Just sort of bad intel. They, didn't, they came to the wrong planet. They lost contact with their home planet. But now they're just biding their time. And if the home planet ever contacts us and makes contact with them, they will take over. And they'll take over our bodies as well. That would be great. Quick side note. Uh, it's not pronounced calamari or whoever you said. It's calamari. Oh, is it? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is calamari. That sounded, sounded stupid the way you said it. Like, uh, That's great. It probably is in Italian. Who knows, right? <laughs> calamari. It's, calamari. Let me share a story real quick first. When I was a kid, I went to Japan. Mm. And I went to a like, really expensive sushi restaurant with my mom. And there was an octopus, and it started moving in the bowl, and I started screaming because it's like, oh my god, it's moving. And I, so I, I recognized the truth then. I just didn't know it until now. Gray aliens are Asians. Who says that? People online. They, they think that the gray alien, you know, the grays with the large eyes. They think they're hairless like Asian people. They think they're small. They think they're robotic like Asians. They think they're smart at math and stuff like that. So a lot of people think <laughs> Asians are the grays. Well, copy. They are. I mean, we've already figured that on the show multiple times. I would like to know how it is even that Asian people have both the stereotype of large eyes and small eyes. That's a very confusing right. I don't understand. It's more the shape of the eyes. I yeah, mean. yeah, it's more the shape. Yeah, yeah. They're like almond shaped. I don't know. This is just some people online. You never look at almonds the same. <laughs> okay, so if they like a bowl of Asian eyes? I don't think I'm good. <laughs> I respect to my Asian friends. I'm going to pass on that. Yeah, well, yeah. and we're smart, too, so you shouldn't eat us. I mean, just kidding. Some oh, Asian eye milk? Oh, my God. 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 <laughs> Asian tears is almond milk. Right. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so gray aliens are Asians. Mm-hmm. And I recognize at that Japanese restaurant that octopuses are, you know, like they're aliens. And it's just a small leap to go from that. Octopuses are actually Asian. So they're, they're another... <laughs> I missed that logic. I, yeah. They're another part... Like, are they related to the greys or they're uh, another set? A set a we came from the something. octopuses. The greys. Okay. Oh, the greys did and the Asians. Because greys are Asians. Therefore, if the greys came from octopuses, so did the Asians. Is the trans so it, it's is, the evolution is octopus gray Asian. Yes. Is that oh, why okay, Asians are good at breakdancing? <laughs> <laughs> is that what Grey's anatomy is about? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're good at camouflage. I mean, ninjas. I see. I see. We're done. No more theories. <laughs> this is the theory right here. But are they aliens? Oh, they are aliens and they're Asian. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. We're all, okay. it's like a, just a line. I got you. Okay. I'm not, I mean, I'm not 100% sure it's like what Kat was saying, that octopus, alien, greys, Asians. It could just be like some version, like, you know how Neanderthals and Homo sapiens are kind of. Oh, okay. Like, right, right. we're all kind of in the same family. Ten years ago, I would have definitely chimed in on this part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to kind of let it go by. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> all right, Cat. changed in ten years. Cat, <laughs> what is your theory? All right, my theory, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the boring one. I'm going to say that we just evolved in such separate eight places on the planet, right? They evolved, like, so deep. And, and like, look, if humans evolved to be as smart as we are, then, like, just by pure chance, there's going to be other things that are as smart as we are, too. Like, why would we be special? Mm-hmm. Right. So octopuses are the under the water version of that. And then there's also orcas and dolphins who are also super smart. So, like, of course, there's going to be something else that's super smart. But I do think there had to be some kind of, like, supernatural thing that happened. Like, there has to. So it's like <laughs> there was an alien spaceship and it, like, beamed <laughs> down on their DNA to change it. Because okay, that's how. Wait, people, how did you start oh, this? How did you start this talk? You said I'm going to be boring, <laughs> and I'm going to. So somehow they were touched by. An they alien. were touched by an alien. Right, yeah, right, right. like some the spaceship came and like beamed down radioactive stuff that like hit the DNA of like some dumb fish worm. Maybe the aliens were going to eat them, and then they were like, no. No, no, no. It's not that involved. This okay, is a little okay. bit more of a detached alien theory. It's like aliens passing by in the spaceship. <laughs> zap the water not on purpose or on purpose maybe on purpose maybe they're fishing maybe they want food they're zapped they're doing a stop like they always do they go in the water and it affects the dna of a dumb worm fish and makes it super smart and that becomes octopuses 
Maybe maybe they made us too. Like every time they pass by, they like zap some random thing. Maybe that's how they created Asians. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got zapped twice. Yes. <laughs> that's why you're special. <laughs> All right, Ben, what's your theory here? I'll tell you the real truth, but also as a side note, if you're curious, I had an encounter with an orca once as well. Oh. What? Wait. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, Are you just you one of those move? people who lies? You etch a tent and you look up. <laughs> <laughs> no, th- 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 this was less direct, but it was deeply spooky. I was at SeaWorld with my family and we saw the orca show, the last show of the day, and then the park closes and we all walked to the exit of the park, and at the exit, so nobody's really left in the park, I realized I left my sweatshirt in the seats. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, I left my sweatshirt, I'm gonna go get it, and I sprint back through the park, and I'm through this closed sea life park, and I go back into the orca area, and I get my sweatshirt, and I start walking across the bridge, so now the orcas are not in the show area, they're in the back area where the pool is, and there's just one that's all the way in the far end, and he sees me crossing the bridge, and literally swims across the pool under where I am on the bridge, looks up and literally go like it was asking me to like free him or something. It was the <laughs> oh, creepiest. No. It was so creepy and intense and like heartfelt and emotional and also very scary. Like even though I was like a good 40 feet above this tank, I felt like it was about to like jump up and like break the glass right, right, tank. Right. Like it was just so intense. And I sprinted off that bridge after that moment happened and went back to my I think parents. you're in the wrong business. Everything, you have yeah. so many animal stories. I know, I should you have like a lion like, story. You have an animal yeah. show. Yeah, you can't understand <laughs> why my dog is suddenly her. barking a lot at night every right, night. Right. You can't figure it out. <laughs> I would like, it was, what, what I like about that story is like maybe he was saying, Help me, but maybe he was just saying, "Nice shoes." Yeah, you know. Maybe <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> true. This is true. You're gonna be on Young Turks later. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of the Young Turks, man. <laughs> you fucking ass. <laughs> you one of my haters. Block. <laughs> um, but here's the real truth about octopuses: it, they are aliens. I think we've established that. That's true. But what happened was they live on an eight pronged planet that. It kind of looks like your headphone splitter. They live on an eight-pronged planet that just has tentacles coming out of it. And every every time an octopus is born on that planet, it spawns off little mini octopi that just re- replicate the, the size and shape of the planet. Mm-hmm. But they themselves become the flying saucer, so to speak. So uh, they're like a flying saucer or they're like uh, a mini planet? They're like, well, like a mini planet, but they can travel and direct very well. So they're more like a direct, more like an asteroid, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Right. And they can obviously fly and float with the kind of the eight arms. You know, if you had any less, it wouldn't suffice. And <laughs> um, the reason they came to Earth, though, you were wrong about what you thought, Dwayne. Mm-hmm. The reason they came to Earth was, a lot of people don't know this, but Red Lobster initially... <laughs> I don't know why you would laugh at that. Red Lobster was originally going to be called the Purple Octopus. And it was going to be serving mm-hmm. exclusively octo- octopi. And you'd get a discount if you came with a party of eight. Otherwise, you had to just bring doggy bags or octopus <laughs> bags, as it were. Mm-hmm. And so they heard about this. And they knew that, that they'd already pre-colonized Earth. And they were like roaming free a lot. And that was one of their favorite places. Like you, like you guys mentioned, that they liked the water. They wanted to come swim. But and it was a good environment for them. But they needed to stop the, the Purple Octopus from launching. And so they came and surrounded like in a kind of a goo gel manner the red lobster headquarters that was at the time called the purple octopus Mm, and they didn't let anybody in there breathe kind of like holding a shark until it doesn't move anymore (laughs) and they communicated in various different ways like an orca on a bridge or whatever way they communicate (laughs) in different ways and they convinced them like fuck the lobsters like lobsters is who you should go for they're delicious it's kind of like a like a challenge to get in there <laughs> so they kind of put this idea in that's their right head. they sold they threw lobsters under the bus i see and to this day forward lobsters you know get eaten at a rapid rate and you eat a lot less octopus we still eat octopus right right but there's no chain restaurant at least that red lobster that's is going out of business, so they a are they of, a lot mm-hmm. of them are. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're closing them. down like a thousand. A of really? Them. Why? So who goes there? When was the last time you went to one? That's a very good point. <laughs> I dated a girl for a minute who loves red lobster. Yeah, yeah. Wait, did I date her? No, I didn't date her. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's like um. You're like I just heard about her it's like on some NPR. Form of white flight, you know. <laughs> no, I think like, I thought like, about dating her, and then how much she liked red lobster really threw me off. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> 
You're like, this is a red flag. But I kind of wanted to like hang out with her long enough to go to Red Lobster because I hadn't been there in a long time and I didn't do it. <laughs> I would like to go to one before they do shut down operations. Well, it's kind of odd if like, I mean, we're still going to Olive Garden. I mean, it seems like. It's cruel to the they, olives. They, they're the same yeah, kind of very cruel to the place, olives. you know. And the bread is very mean to the bread. One time there was a fellow who wanted to be my manager, but I was like, something's off about this a guy. Fellow? And he was like, yeah, a, a guy. And uh, a, a, someone with a wiener you guys, <laughs> wanted to be my manager. Incredible. And he's like, let's get lunch and talk. And I was like, something's off about this guy. And you know where he took me? Red Lobster. Really? And that was the final straw. Was I was like, there is something wrong with this was person. Was he an octopus? Yeah. Can we even mention also the fact this is not talked about a lot. And a lot of, you know, lobster is a delicacy. People love it. It's tasteless. It really is. If you is. don't dip it yeah, in, really butter. you don't dip it in yeah. butter or yeah. at least spray lemon on it. It feels like you're and also it, biting it used, chewy styrofoam. It used to be what poor yeah. people ate, like because right. it, it, got, it, it got trash switched around somehow. Yeah, because right? yeah. it's on the bottom of the ocean. It eats yeah. all the trash. That's right. Mm. It's like a sea anemone. I'm seeing enemies. Say it again. It's like a sea anemone. <laughs> I'm seeing enemies. Nice, nice. I don't know if you knew this, but Ben is a prolific rapper. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It is. So your theory to recap Ben is they are oh, good luck with this. Yep. They came here to chillax. Yep. Um, initially, yeah. Some initially. Moment. Kind of Superman style. And then at some point, we, either we rose to prominence or they knew we would, and they knew we were going to open Red Lobsters. And they found out. They found Word out. got back. And they s- convinced the Red Lobster people to switch and not be called the... Yeah, through a hostile takeover. Purple. Purple octopus. octopus. Correct. And they did that by some brainwaves or hostile takeover or... Did they just kind of like a, a hostile takeover of the building, but then brainwave communication kind of or, <laughs> or the bridge style. I see, I see, I see. You you think we would have heard about that? But then again, maybe they're, maybe they're, maybe they also told the Red Lobster people, you know, you keep this under wraps. Yeah. yeah. Well, they yeah. erase their memories, like in Men in Black. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably the same thing for boiling crab. It's probably boiling crabs tasty. <laughs> crabs can be crabs tasty. pretty yeah. tasty, but it's still how you season it, right? Also true. And as a total tangent, just because it's above your head, there's a per- poster that says Dermot Mulrooney on it, and it really bothers me that his name is pronounced Mulrooney when it's spelled Mulroney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he needs, he needs Mulroney. another O, he right? Another o. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, go yeah. fuck yourself with Mulrooney. <laughs> Dumb Mulrooney. This is on. this is Koji's movie, Ruthless. By the way, is it? Yeah, yeah. good movie. Yeah, so it's on uh, what Hulu? Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, but he looks like Wolverine in this picture. He does. Yeah, yeah I see it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Wolverine, two O's. Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, it's time for us to pick the unofficial official story, one that will answer this question once and for all. So which three do we want to go with today? See, the thing is, I like them all, but in mine, we have sort of like, almost like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and a lot of us have sort of this latent octopus DNA inside Yours of us. Yours does give us superpowers if, if they ever do click that back on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like sleeper agents. Right. right. But we all, know, we all know that they're Asians, so. <laughs> right. I mean, right. I mean, have you ever wondered why we eat sushi? I mean, we eat. Seafood. It's the same food that the octopuses eat. That exactly. Mm. And you know, well, why do we do so well on the SAT? Right. We have twenty brains. I, mean, I feel like you keep trying to bait me into making. He's <laughs> <laughs> the only one that continually keeps bringing up Asian stereotypes. This whole podcast. Well, because what would happen is whatever you said in response, they'd cut what to- what Koji said first. Exactly. Out. exactly. <laughs> and it would just you would just sound crazy. Yeah. Whatever the thing is. I'd like to be on SNL one day, then get fired, and then become one of the biggest comics in the world. Not falling for this. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but also, and then be asked to host SNL. Maybe that's why Asians spend their pins on their fingers. You know, it's like that. Is that, that, do that. that I will go on the limb and say yeah. Asians oh, do yeah, spin do their do pin, pins on their Between fingers. Between the fingers and around. and They're Very good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a level one pen spinner because I had Asian classmates, that. but I never really know. <laughs> Same thing. I'm level one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could do the Asian squat. I don't know what that is. Asian squat? No. That's where they sit down, like, you know, like squatting with their feet on the ground. Like you've never, okay, never I mind. didn't know that belonged to you guys. I no, squatting is Asian. I now? think it's the indigenous squat, right? Or yeah, just yeah. but it's it's called the Asian squat. What do you mean though? instead yeah, of yeah, sitting yeah. on a chair? Yeah, like they just sit on. We could just sit with you know squatting yeah. and just you can do just things sit and not, comfortably. Yeah, yeah for how long? We're not the front even touching forever. So you have like bend to your knees. Is well, that we, what you're no, saying? No, no. We all used to wow. be able to do Maybe that are until we started sitting in chairs. That's wild. I don't. You know? I'd like to see what this looks like. Here we go. You're comfortable like this. No way. Actually, that's how my son became a catcher. Was he was at a baseball Hilarious. practice? He was at a baseball practice, and the coach was like, "Are you comfortable?" And my son was like, "Yeah." He said, "You should be a catcher." And then that day, my son's like, "I'm going to be a catcher." And I was well, like, "Shouldn't there be a lot more catchers who are Asian in the true 
Major leagues? But, but and, I, and I feel hockey, like that coach has had a weird theory because that's not the only thing you need to be a good catcher is to be comfortable <laughs> in that position. You also got to be comfortable with having b- hard rocks thrown at you at 90 miles yeah, an hour. that's true. That's true. Which is a very... I, I, I caught once for like a third of a season in Little League. Yeah. Horrible. And you got to be okay with that bat whizzing by you. Bat oh. whizzing by you, people swinging, foul balls hitting you. Somehow the ball always found a way like between my knee pad and my shin and my uh, thigh pad. <laughs> And I got even hit somehow in the one inch of exposed skin. Also, someone could fart on you while they're batting. Okay, well, that's taking <laughs> That's it the too worst far. part. That's yeah. true. I mean, you are outside, but yeah, I guess that You're outside. You are crouched down. It's a terrible, it's a terrible job. The only thing that's cool about it is you are responsible for half of the great pop that when it hits that glove right. Right. And that catcher's mitt makes a pop different than any other mitt. And you, it's can, really nice. you can, like, make pitches strikes that aren't. You yeah. can frame it, and you can tell a pitcher what to pitch. So it's mm-hmm. kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's always funny to me that the catcher chooses what the pitcher pitches. Like, the pitcher can't decide this on his own. He needs a guy <laughs> he can behind. wave it off. Yeah, yeah. He can wave it off. He has veto <laughs> rights, but he doesn't get to decide what he's pitching. It's really strange. <laughs> and he has to just keep being like, mm Because the catchers nope. are smarter Mm-mm. than the pitchers. That's what the... Because General. a lot of them are Asian. No, it's not true. Right? By the way, if you're wondering why so many tangents this episode, we're recording at 10 p.m. at this point. Right, right, right. <laughs> so. maybe, but maybe the catch is also like, definitely going to be a fastball. Then he's like, curve. I told him fastball. Make sure it's a curve. You know, that kind of thing. So Okay, so mm-hmm. which one do you guys go for? I think we're stalling, too. I think we can't I, pick. I think mine really is good. great. I think mine is very grounded in aliens <laughs> just zapping the you DNA, but not fully being involved. System. We're all going to vote yeah. for our own. I'm going to say this. I, 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 I'll... I really like mine, and I encourage you to vote for mine. <laughs> I like Ben's, too, because it was just so far out. But I'm actually going to go with Cats. Thank you. Because it's sort of like, yeah, aliens impacted the situation, but they're not actual aliens. But they were touched by an alien. It's a and sprinkle. And I think that's a nice sort a of sprinkle like... sprinkle of alienhood. Yeah. <laughs> that's a nice that's middle right. ground, and I think it's, it's quite, a little bit quite possible. like how Elizabeth Warren is Native American. It's just a sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> It's a tiny bit. It's the same way that I'm she, black. And she dresses right, purple right. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> loves to wear that purple jumpsuit, the purple business suit. Like, I'm go. voting for Red Lobster. Thank you. Okay, okay. Because I just like the idea that it used to be called Purple Octopus. That's actually not bad. And Thank so, you. And Ben, mm-hmm. you're voting for... I was going to vote for Cats to give her, but now that I got a vote, <laughs> I'm voting for my own. Okay, okay so, so now we have a tie. We're still tie. A tie too, too. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tie break goes to your guest, obviously. No. Yeah, yeah, I okay. guess so. Yeah, I can, we could go yeah. with that. So yeah, yeah, so yeah. Sorry, cat, you yeah. lost. <laughs> so sorry, cat. Your idea was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> There's absolutely zero merit in your story. I mean, where, what planet are you from? So you can come up with this zapping the water. Okay. What? Uh, weird. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, they just commandeered aggressively and made a hostile yeah. takeover of the Red Lobster headquarters. <laughs> right. Right. Try we, to stay grounded if you can. Right, yeah. right. We I'll know, try hiding. Space Odyssey time. 2001, the original scene where the, where the chimps touched the thing. It was actually octopus? It was octopus. And they were like... <laughs> and then people were like, this makes no sense. Do anybody want to go to the market with me straight from here and get octopus and just eat up? <laughs> I think they're going to be probably an Asian market that is open 24 hours and has octopus fresh right now. No, I'm sure. We Asians like to eat anything. Just, just drive around Alhambra. Yeah. Well, Alhambra's definitely got some octopus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hot octopus is octopus. It's right. called cruising for octopus, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not the way I meant it. <laughs> well. Sorry. And that is the official story. We'll take another break and we'll answer for our sins. Assuming the octopuses are aliens and assuming they decided to get revenge against humans for eating them, which one of us would be spared and which one of us would be punished by the octopus overlords? Okay, so are you basically saying we're all going to get eaten except for one? Right. You mean one in this room right now? Yeah, in this mm-hmm. room. Well, I mean, Ben just just suggested we go get some more octopus. I was, you know, I was, everybody knows I was saying that to save them, and when we headed out, I was going to free them all. <laughs> right, 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 right. I was going to go find the, wherever the market is, find out where, where the Asian octopus market is. And then, that's why, otherwise, I wouldn't know. As, as you're going to be the Liam life. Neeson of octopus. Yeah, you're going to break the Just, tank. And- well, I do have is a very particular set of skills. <laughs> to release octopuses into the wild. <laughs> You wouldn't like me when I'm hungry. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think they would. I think they're going to spare me. What? Yeah. what? Why? They probably like my theory. I don't think I've had. I've eaten that much octopus in my life. I don't, I don't know if calamari counts. I mean, 
Calamari is not an octopus. That's a squid. Well, squid yeah, but it's also they're, pronounced they're... calamari. <laughs> calamari right. They're related. They're related. The calamari calamity is um, it's referred to. Are they related? Yeah, yeah. They're squids, right? They're I think. Cephalopods? I think they. Yeah, they're they, cephalopods. They yeah. broke off evolutionarily. Like that's only if you believe in evolution. It's like it's like squids were the jocks, and then octopuses were the people who who studied a lot more math and <laughs> right, they, like, right, evolved. Right. Why are you cool. looking at me when you said math? <laughs> Uh, wow. I said meth wow. when I looked at you. She said meth. Okay. Yeah, I, I just think <laughs> it's I not you. Why not me? It's I, just think, not you. I think they. I think they completely would be into what I do, and they wouldn't be like, "Yeah, we're going to spray this." Okay, guy. so you know the story about the hey, octopus man. moving at, in Japan. I actually ate it. So, I mean, I'm the octopus is what the you know how I was moving when and, you screamed. Yeah, when I screamed, I, my mom it. made me eat it. Oh, yeah. he did. She did. So, so, you think so it would you? punish you. Because no, they would punish me. They punish you. Yeah. I think they would spare me. Well, okay, maybe because I'm the woman, and it can then use me to incubate its spawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's a great argument. A great I, I argument. think you win with that. One. Yeah, it's a solid argument. A solid I mean, argument. I mean, is it being spared or is it also punishment? <laughs> so that's right, that's, that's why I think yeah. I would be the one kept. But although but giving be birth a to a bunch of octopuses is probably not as bad as. A human. They'd be human octopus uh, hybrids. Hybrids. Mm-hmm. Although giving birth to an octopus would probably be pain free. Oh what I mean. yeah, because they have no bones. Yeah, it would just slip right out. I mean, that's what right. girls say to me all the time. I probably get eaten by an octopus. Hopefully, deep fried. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to go. I think. I think based on your argument, they would. They would spare save you. you. Yeah, it's a great that's, argument. That's a great argument. It's a great argument. It's, <laughs> I think it's what happens. Yeah, unfortunately, in battle with the women. So <laughs> they got dark. <laughs> it did. Yeah. <laughs> You Other know than even that architect so, just stays across species, across planets. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I'm on the selective service uh, board for Southern California, and when what it comes, what up, does that mean? Um, if there's ever like uh, for the draft, yeah, something? if there's ever a draft, okay. I would be on. I'm the board of the California guard? for Southern California. Well, like you no, would choose for, the people. No, if there was like say like you did like your son didn't want to fight or something, and then they would eventually come to my board or the board that I'm on. But if it ever comes up, and um, I don't want a woman, I will say what you just said that you know they're going to get impregnated, so we can't have we can't have women soldiers. Is that what we're saying? Mm-hmm. Right. It's Wait, risky. You're saying yeah. if. If I don't understand draft, this board you're on. Oh, this yeah. is for the National Guard? No, no. It's if there's a draft. You know how like when you if, turn 18, yeah, you have to draft. Yeah, you have to okay. sign up for the draft. You don't. You don't go serve. You decide who serves. No. So if, they don't if people want to, want to appeal it, yeah. If you appeal board, it, I would. I would be on the, but women on, don't get drafted, do they? No, but I, I think it's going to it's going to it's going to change soon. I think. I'd like to say you'll be spared because you're a great guy and you're really smart. Well, I'm too old. I'm too old, but I'm talking about like like young. I'm too old too. Never mind. You probably be. That's a good oh, board to be on, though, because if it ever comes down to it, some rich dude is going to line your pockets. Although, to be so fair, you know who the youngest person <laughs> in this room is who would probably have the freshest meat? Cat? No. <laughs> no. I mean, to be fair. You're, you're, you're being double. I think you're right, though. I'm I'm in my 30s. My uh, my womb is not so fresh. <laughs> my womb is my womb. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> My womb has seen a thing or two. It's a womb with a view, you know. Right, right, right. So that's our that's our conclusion, you guys. Either way, not a very bright one for me. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ben, for coming on with us. Please tell us where people can follow you. It's very nice of you to ask, and it's been my pleasure being back here. I think we established that Elon Musk is an octopus, and <laughs> well, I'm confusing episodes now. I'm conflating episodes. Uh, you can uh, follow me at Ben Glebe on Instagram, X, uh, you know, the other ones, threads. Some I don't really post that much there, but sometimes Instagram is really my heart and soul, TikTok. Mm-hmm. So follow me on there and you can see my shows there and my virtual shows. I got virtual shows every month. You can join me, camera on, mic on, and be part of the fun of my really weird improvised global intimate show called Gleeb Off the Top. So you, you know all that. Thank you all so much for listening. There are almost 3 million podcasts and we're honored you chose ours. Please check out our website, unofficialofficialstory.com for show notes or to hear past episodes. Please follow us on Instagram, X, TikTok, and YouTube. And we'd love to hear from you. You can send us a message by clicking on the Contact Us button on our website or leave us a voicemail. Click on the microphone button at the bottom of the homepage. Tell us what we got right or tell us what we got wrong. Or uh, tell us how much you love us or hate us. Or if there's a topic you think we should cover, 
You can tell us that too. Or uh, who would make the perfect guest? Let us know. Yes, and please consider writing a review of our show on the platform you use to listen to the podcast. We know it's a pain in the butt, but it does go a long way in helping the show. It helps us reach new listeners, grow our show, and most importantly, it enables us to keep putting out the content that we hope you enjoy. Please join us next month when we celebrate the anniversary of the personal computer by asking, does Bill Gates want to control the population? All right, guys. All right. Have a great night. I love it. Bye, everybody. Bye. We're brought to you, as always, by Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs>